Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs, and I'm here at Fat Quarter Shop, and I'd like to show you a little bit about my Quilt As You Go techniques. My first ever pattern that I published was a Quilt As You Go table runner called the Braid Runner. Now the method that I use is nothing that I invented. Way back in the day, when we made the log cabin hot pads, that's when I got introduced to that method. But I thought, how come we don't do anything more interesting than just a log cabin? So I started playing with it, and that kind of escalated into a whole bunch of patterns, quilt as you go. So what is it? You start with your whole piece of backing, whole piece of batting, and then as you piece your project, you're quilting it at the same time. So once you're done, all you have to do is add the binding and you're done. So all of my projects are smaller because of course we don't want to work with a huge piece of batting and trying to roll that up under our machines. So we're talking placemats and table runners, table toppers, baby quilts is actually a really good one. And then some of the biggest things that I would make with the method are maybe about a 60 inch, so maybe like a tree skirt or a large table cover. So let me just show you some of these things that I have here. I just have a couple of placemats. This is the Friday Fiesta placemat, all done quilt as you go. Here's another one, just as an, as an example. So we piece the tree, quilt as you go, and then fill in all the rest. But what I wanna talk to you about in this video is some of the tips and tricks when you're doing quilt as you go. As you may imagine, I've tried all kinds of different battings and products, so I'd like to tell you what works best for me. So first off, whenever we're doing Quilt As You Go, you wanna use a walking foot on your machine. Most machines these days come with a walking foot or you can easily buy one for your machine. If your machine doesn't come with one, there's a lot of generic ones that are made for any machine, so you can just purchase that. This tool helps move the fabric through and all the layers through the machine so that your top fabric is not sliding. So it's kind of working from both sides. You've got the feed dogs on the bottom and then the walking foot will help on the top. So very crucial for quilt as you go. Second, for your machine, you want to increase your stitch length just a little bit because we are working through a thick layer. So just like you're quilting, sometimes the machine has a little trouble getting through it. So I like to increase my stitch length like by a half when I'm doing quilt as you go. But let's talk about backing and batting. So we, whenever you're working on a project, the pattern will tell you how, what size backing and batting you need. I usually like to use kind of a backing that neutral backing, sometimes with a little bit of a pattern because our stitches are going to show through. Now this is not a pattern because I wanted to be able to show you my stitches, but I like to use a pattern because that helps hide the stitches a little bit. Which brings me to my thread. So you wanna choose thread, especially for your bobbin, that matches your backing and it's gonna blend in nicely. I love to use Aurifil 50 weight thread when I'm doing Quilt As You Go, it's great for piecing. And so it will really just help, it's not that thick, so it really just helps that fabric fold over and works well for both the quilting and the piecing. Now as far as batting, you can use any kind of batting for Quilt As You Go. I prefer something that's very compact. My favorite is actually Fusible Fleece by Bozo. So this batting is fusible, but only on one side which makes it super easy when you work in Quilt As You Go because you can just take your batting and you lay your backing on top and you iron that on and then you're basting your sandwich already so nothing will move on you when you start doing your Quilt As You Go. So then you have your machine set, you have your backing and batting. Sometimes we have to do a few markings on our batting before we start. That is depending on the pattern. Sometimes it's very little, sometimes it's not a lot at all. And for those markings, you can use any kind of marking tool you want, a pen, pencil, water erasable pen if you have, are using light fabrics and are worried they're gonna show through. And then you're ready to go. So you have all your pieces cut out and you're ready to do quilt as you go. So how that works, you will place your strip, or I'm just showing this with strips, so you could be cut, differently cut units. And so you will lay your piece down and then your next piece would be going on top right sides together, and then you would wanna pin this in place. Now, normally when I'm piecing, I do not like using pins, but when I'm doing Quilt As You Go, 
pins or your friends because that's just going to help keep that fabric in place as you sew down with your uh, walking foot. So it's just going to help keep everything in place. Once you have stitched this down, like here, as you stitch, every single stitch that you're doing with Quilt As You Go, in the beginning of the stitch and of the end, each seam, you want to take a few stitches in the same place at the beginning and the end, or if you have a button on your machine that's set fixed, just hit that button and it will tie off the beginning and on the end. This will kind of help secure those threads so when you're done, you can just clip your threads even with the back and you have, don't have to worry about them unraveling at all. So after we have sewed down our seam, and so here's another thing that's a little bit tricky with Quilt As You Go, it's a little hard to keep our very accurate quarter inch seam. But don't worry, most of my patterns have that little trick built into them, so we have quite a bit of a wiggle room. So you sew that seam, and then you're ready to press this strip out. What I do recommend and what I do when I'm doing Quilt As You Go, I always finger press first. So push that strip out or that rectangle or whatever you're working with, push it out first. And then you wanna just take your iron and just lay it lightly on top to flatten that seam. You don't wanna to press too much. You don't wanna to press too hard on the batting because that is, can sometimes irritate the batting. So just lay it lightly. If we do start pushing things out with our iron, sometimes we get little, little creases in the seam, which is what we don't want. So then you're just ready to keep going according to the pattern. If this was just a fill in with strips, I would just lay the next strip on, sew it on and stitch and flip my way to finish my project. I hope you learned a little something, a few little tips and tricks when doing Quilt As You Go. If you wanna learn more about this method, I do have another video here on Fat Quarter Shop's YouTube channel. And that's how to make the Friday Fiesta placemats. I also have quite a few Quilt As You Go videos on my own YouTube, which is GE Designs. And if you want more projects, come to my website, gequiltdesigns.com, and there you will find a monthly club with a project and a video every month called Fast and Furious Club. Thank you for watching.